What's up YouTube, welcome back to Aviator Chris. Today we're gonna to take a look at the X-Plane 12 Beta 2 graphical sliders and see how they impact the home simulator with the 355 inch 4K TVs. Stick around. All right, so the purpose of this video is to take a look and see how X-Plane 12 Beta 2 performs in the home simulator. I'm uh, running the home sim with 355 inch 4K TVs, but they are in 2K resolution mode to get a little bit more performance out of them. Uh, and this is also going to demonstrate how well the sim works with the pop-out panels uh, for the real sim gear G1000s. All right, just a little bit about the specs on my machine. It's an i9-12900K, 32 gigs of DDR5, an RTX 3090, and it's all running on a 2 terabyte uh, NVMe drive. All right, let's hop on into the sim, take a look at where the graphical sliders are at, what our current frame rates are, and we'll set some predefined weather, and uh, we'll see what the end result is. All right, so here we are on the sim right now. We're using the VFR scattered preset, and this is basically what it pre-configures for us. And here's our graphical tab. So right now, basically, we have all the sliders at full maximum, so we can kind of showcase what the absolute worst case scenario should be sitting on the ground in the default Cessna 172. And if we take a look at the bottom row, these are all the monitors already pre-configured. They're all in full screen simulator mode uh, for the main three. Uh, with the visual uh, settings here, the lateral field of view, and the visual offsets for each screen. And then monitor three and four, the real sim gear panels, and they're in 2D panel only mode because that's where the G1000 PFD and MFD pop-outs are. All right, and lastly, we have our Windows display settings. Here's the three 55-inch TVs. Uh, they are in 2K resolution which we see here, 2560 by 1440 on all three of those. My main machine here uh, is actually a mirrored display between the main display in the simulator and the main display on my desk. If you want some more information on that, you can check out my home sim uh, tour deep dive series where I go over all the components and how everything is all configured. Um, basically the long and short of it is I don't have a dedicated home sim machine, so I use my main gaming PC here. Uh, mirror the displays and run a wiring harness over. But if you want any more information on that, you could definitely check out that uh, playlist on all the components there. And then lastly, we have the PFD and MFD for the real sim gear uh, panels for the G1000s, and those are running in 1024 by 768 each. So here we are on the ramp here at my home base of Republic. Uh, we're in the stock G1000 Cessna. We have the weather configured with the VFR scattered. Uh, and here we see the frame rates are, uh, I would go as far as to say this is definitely unplayable. The the flight sim frame rate is teetering at 19 uh, and the actual frame rate for the sim is bouncing between 18 and 22. So definitely unplayable here, uh, just sitting on the ramp with everything maxed out. And just doing a bit of an external view here, looking at the ramp, uh, we see again, the frame rates are, are pretty much about the same. There's really not much change here. Uh, they're actually slightly less as, as obviously there's more graphical items being rendered into the uh, the full scene here. So back into the settings here, let's take a look at uh, how much of an impact on FPS each individual slider uh, has here. So I'm not going to do anything too crazy or scientific here. Uh, I'm basically going to take each individual slider and set it between max and then completely to the lowest or offsetting. And then just kind of say, you know, how much does each individual slider have as an impact on FPS? So we'll actually start with the cloud quality as that, uh, from everything that I've read, seems to be the most impactful uh, for performance. So we're gonna go ahead and take this from the maximum, and it basically has three settings, max, medium, and low. We're gonna set it to low and see what the FPS looks like. And quite honestly, we don't really have much of a difference here. Um, we're basically sitting roughly around the same frame rates, um, but the clouds definitely don't look as good um, but again, FPS seems to be about the same. So back to the settings, we're going to put clouds back on maximum. We're going to bring shadows to aircraft only. And shadows on aircraft only now that the sim is stabilized. We definitely gained, I would say, a 3 or 4 FPS average here. And then on the exterior view, still pretty poor, but overall hovering around 20 FPS. So we're going to bring shadows back up. And we're going to bring rendering distance to minimal and see what impact that has. Okay, so now we have minimal rendering distance. And again, we're probably looking somewhere between 22 and 27 FPS. It's bouncing around a lot. Uh, and then in the exterior view, we can definitely see a, you know, a, a difference in the render quality. The, the trees are really just 
stretch, maybe a mile, if I was going to guess, at best, um, before the vegetation and everything starts to just fall off to the generic ground textures. And, uh, you know, performance doesn't seem to have increased all that much. Back to the settings again, we're going to bring the render distance back up, and world objects we're going to set to minimal. Okay, so with world objects set to minimal, we're still kind of hanging in the 20s here. No one slider so far has really made a drastic difference um, in the overall performance of the sim. But one common theme is we are seeing a definite degradation in the image quality, but just not a substantial increase in performance. Back to the settings, world objects back to max, vegetation back to minimal. Back on the ground, the sim has settled up a little bit here, and we're looking at roughly about the same FPS. Um, obviously, the vegetation now seems to be non-existent, but all the world objects are back in, and we're kind of hovering a little bit down into the lower 20s now instead of that mid-20 range average. Okay, we're going to bring vegetation back up, and we're going to take texture quality now, and we are going to lower that to minimal, and let's see what happens and what it looks like when we bring the texture quality down this low. Okay, so loaded back in and definitely we see a huge degradation to the texture quality. Everything just looks smooth and almost like airbrushed. Um, still low 20 FPS here, but this is, this is definitely unusable for me. I, I would never be able to run the sim at this low of a, a texture setting. So back in, we're going to bring textures up to max. We're going to take ambient occlusion. We're going to bring that down to none and see what happens. And now with ambient occlusion off, taking a look, I, visually I don't see much of a difference, but we're also really not gaining much at, by ways of performance by turning it off either. So let's go back to the settings, ambient occlusion up. We're not going to mess with the FSR super sampling just yet. We're going to take anti-aliasing uh, anti and we're going to turn that to none. And that did gain us a little bit of stability in frame rates. We're, we're almost solid at 25 FPS now. A um, little bit of, you know, the jaggy is kind of showing up. Uh, and the shimmering. But super rock solid in terms of performance. So this so far out of all the sliders that we've messed with seems to have had the biggest impact overall. Okay, we'll bring anti-aliasing back up to 8x and we'll turn... And I said tropic down. We're going to have to restart X plane for changes to take effect. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back in the sim with anisotropic filtering down to 1x. And taking a look at our frame rates here, uh, it looks like we're about a steady 25, but with a dip to 20 and then back up again. Um, so more or less about the same kind of performance increase as we got with turning off the uh, anti aliasing. And zooming out here and taking a look at the full scene, um, there's a little bit of a difference. It looks like some of the textures get a little blurrier in the distance, but overall, I don't see that large of a degradation in image quality. Okay, back in the sim here, uh, we're back to 16x anisotropic. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at rendering resolution, uh, FSR super sampling. We're just going to bang through those four settings really quick just to see if there's any kind of difference here. So first up, we're going to go from off to ultra. I don't notice any real degradation in image quality, but it does look like we're stabilized at about 25 or so FPS. Quality setting, about 25 to 26 FPS, but I am noticing a degradation in the quality of the text on the compass. Uh, balanced, even worse on the sharpness and quality on the text on the compass, and same about frame rate. And this just looks overall the worst out of all the settings, and we're still only around 25, 26 FPS, and that's putting the FSR super sampling on performance mode. So let's go back to off. All right, so all settings are back on maximum uh, and ultra here. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to bring shadows down, rendering distance down, world objects, and vegetation down all to medium. And let's see what that looks like. That's, I think, about where my X-Plane 11 uh, graphical sliders were. So overall, we're sitting here. This, the Sims theme is about as stable as it's going to get. Uh, we're bouncing between, I don't know, 24 and uh, maybe 23 and 27, 28 FPS. Uh, the flight sim frame rates be being between 19 and 40 for some reason. 
Um, I'm not really sure why that is. It just it doesn't seem stable, and overall, it it just doesn't look that good. The vegetation is 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 definitely a lot sparser than it was, and you know we're still sub 30 FPS. Now again, this is you know the three monitors with the pop out displays. Um, so this is like the worst case stress test scenario for the sim. Um, but in X-Plane 11, I was probably hovering around 40 FPS, if I remember correctly, in, in most planes, in most situations. Let's go ahead and combine Ultra on the FSR setting with everything else at Medium and see what we get. So, and even there, right now, this doesn't look terrible. It's definitely smoother. I'm, I'm hovering in like the high 20s, low 30s now, but that flight sim frame rate is just, it's surging, it's bouncing. Something doesn't seem right with that. So the next thing we're going to do really quick, which I'm really not looking forward to doing, um, is we're going to try the three different modes on the TVs. We're going to go native 4K, and we're also going to drop it down to 1080p um, to see, well, what kind of, you know, FPS boost or not that do we get with the different resolutions um, and what the image quality looks like. All right, we're back in the sim here. Uh, we have the three main displays set to 1080 at 60 hertz, and the PFD MFD on the real sim gear still in 2D panel mode. Uh, and what we see here is we're still in the low 30s on frame rate, so it seems resolution is not making a, a gigantic difference here. Um, we gained 10 FPS, which which is a lot. This is certainly more flyable, I would say. Uh, but the flight simulation frame rate is just surging all over the place, and it just it almost makes the sim in like this stop and go. Uh, it's completely unusable for me in my case. I'm not really sure why that is. I'm going to have to do some troubleshooting. Uh, but ultimately, uh, with that flight sim frame rate surging all over the place, it's just it, it, it's not making for a good experience in X-Plane 12 for me. And now we also see here the PFD and MFD in the G1000s here. They look a little soft. Um, which for me doesn't matter because it's not changing the resolution on the real sim gear displays. But if you were using this in sim on 1080p or trying to downscale, you're definitely losing some image quality there. All right, everyone. So there you have it. If you're a home sim builder like myself, this should give you a little idea of what to expect on some of the most recent hardware and a triple display setup in X-Plane 12. Looking forward to more optimizations from Laminar and seeing where performance ends up when X-Plane 12 is a full release product. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and bell notifications for future videos. And be well and fly safe.